if you can clearly see that you reach to the ceiling, you just will not be growing more if you don't do this particular investment, if you will not start getting links to this page, if you will not invest into creating content. At this point, uh, you should start having conversations with the management trying uh, to sell this idea, trying to get this investment. Before we jump into today's episode, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the sponsor for this episode, Ahrefs. Ahrefs provides you with an all-in-one SEO toolset that does everything from run tracking to backlink analysis, keyword research, and technical audits. The best part, you can now use Ahrefs Webmaster Tools for free to identify and prioritize optimization opportunities for your website, see all the keywords that your web pages are ranking for, take a close look at the websites that link back to and refer you in their content and analyze other websites to find out what drives their rankings. Visit ahrefs.com awt and sign up for free. And now, Back to today's episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the SaaS SEO Show. I'm your host, George Cassiotis, and today I'm very happy and excited to be joined by Arthur Agishev. Arthur started working in SEO in 2014. He spent a lot of time in, in-house in e-commerce projects, but also had the luck to work with many other businesses as a consultant. He's deeply uh, into technical SEO uh, for the last three years. Uh, he's fond of Python, which he started to learn pretty much the same time he got into SEO. Nowadays, he leads the SEO efforts Revolut, a company which I think we all know. Uh, Arthur, welcome to the SaaS SEO show. Hi, George. Thanks for having me today. So as we do with every guest here at the podcast, we we ask people to share a few things about their journey and, um, you know, what has brought them to where they are today. So um, the stage is yours. Sure. Uh, well, I think I think you already said uh, a lot of things about my journey. I'm not sure if I have much to add, but uh, well, I can say that I also started to work in SEO as my first job ever. So I never, uh, well, I, I've done some other jobs, but in my serious uh, job uh, jobs, I only have been doing SEO uh, my entire life. And I started in 2014, eight years ago, so much time. Um, I, I have been working for three years in one um, local uh, huge e-commerce uh, where I basically uh, developed a lot of my SEO skills, which I still currently use because we had a very, uh, very developed, very advanced SEO experts team in that company as it was SEO first e-commerce business. And just to make it clear, when you work in the SEO first business, it's so different. Uh, comparing with just the global business which want to do SEO as one of the channels. And then I joined Farfetch uh, and I worked in Farfetch for six years. I'm not sure if I also need to introduce Farfetch as it's quite a big company. And uh, yeah, in Farfetch, I have been doing many different things. I started uh, on the position of global executive responsible for a couple of markets and then slowly moved to the position of uh, technical manager and last three years of my job in Farfetch, I have been leading the entire technical efforts, all the technical initiatives we were doing in that company. Um, I used to do, uh, back in the days, not, not right now, but I used to do this uh, freelancers jobs uh, in SEO for different websites. I used to do audits. Uh, mainly I was, make, I was doing it because I wanted to grow skills uh, with doing SEO for other websites, right? Because when you work with e-commerce and then you suddenly need to switch to services website or to the news magazine website, it's always very different um, in terms of tactics and your approach. So I wanted to uh, grow this sort of skills as well. And that's uh, that's how I ended up doing this type of jobs in the past. Um, and uh, yeah, um, that's the main things uh, I have to say. Why I ended up here is because after all this, with all, all this time, I think it would be beneficially helpful probably to share the skills and experience I had with the community. Um, I don't know much about your audience, but in my last 
uh, years of working in SEO, I came across, I encountered so many uh, things which are not necessarily always described uh, on the websites, which I think might be useful for people to be aware about to make their life easier in SEO. So nowadays you are leading the SEO efforts at Revolut, which, as I mentioned previously, is a company we, like most of us know, at least here in Europe, for sure. For people who haven't heard of Revolut before, can you please share a few things about what Revolut is and what Revolut does? Sure. Well, uh, our statement on the, on the welcome page says that Revolut it is one app, all things money. And uh, it sounds a bit vague, but it basically describes the application and its uh, main kind of focus. So Revolut at the moment, as I see it, and I guess as we all see it in the company, is a super app which uh, is supposed to make people life easier when it comes to money. Uh, and it's, it sounds very general, but basically that's what we're trying to improve here. We're trying, uh, here in Revolut, we're trying to improve customers experience when they deal with money in many different cases. That's why it's not easy uh, to um, identify a, a, a certain uh, target audience. I would say that in Revolut, we have several products which are being developed at the same time. We have crypto and stocks for those who are interested in getting into trading market. We have international transfers for travelers and people who lives uh, in a different country from their family or something something like that. Um, we have debit cards for teenagers, for parents who want to um, issue a card for, for their kids and also make it easier to, to, to manage the money that they kind of share in the family. So yeah, you, as you can see, there are many products. I just don't want to list all of them. Otherwise, the next hour we will only will be speaking about the products we have, uh, but yeah, it's just uh, it's just a global business which is trying to make, it, which is trying to leverage modern technology to make to to change the way we interact with money, right? To make it easier when it comes to money with pretty much every sphere of your life. When you travel a lot uh, and you spend uh, with with the traditional banking, uh, you would you would be spending with your card paying a lot of fees, and it might not be always very convenient to withdraw cash or do other things. In Revolut, we were trying to make life of these people easier in the beginning, but as you see now, the, the business is growing and we're trying to address uh, many other areas as well. And you're making it easier because I am a you know, Revolut customer and uh, I can attest to that. I may be biased during this, this whole episode, but uh, let's let's get to the, you know, Conan Desio stuff. Um, why does a company like Revolut need SEO in the first place? I mean, as I, as I understand it, it's especially nowadays, the use cases are so many. Um, and like, do you really need to do SEO? It's a very good uh, question, George. And um, I, I, I don't, I, I also want to, to say it correctly, but uh, Revolut is a very specific business. Uh, in my understanding, if it would be any other uh, senior, similar uh, kind of business, similar product, the company probably would already have been investing in SEO, have been investing in the website. Revolut is unique in the sense that it's such a well-known product, which uh, have been building so many services, which have been building uh, an amazing app uh, during seven years. But as a company, we never really invested in the website. Uh, I can tell you that during all this time, uh, the engineers told me that Revolut already had uh, like three different versions of the website. So before we joined, uh, different teams used to just hand over the websites to another team. We would be migrating over and over again. And we never tried to really approach it in a structural way. So uh, that's what I guess make Revolut case very unique that it's already normally you start doing SEO when business only uh, just like starting. Uh, it's very rare when you have a, a developed develop mobile application, but not very developed website. Why do we need to start investing in SEO? Why do we need SEO is mainly uh, because this traffic, well, I might sound biased, but this traffic is better uh, in terms of acquisition. I always, uh, I know that you can uh, actually drive traffic 
from returning customers as well, not only acquis for acquisition purposes from organic. But in my understanding, main purpose of SEO in businesses and businesses which actually needs to make money is to acquire new people, acquire new customers, expose your business for people who are searching to solve they are, their um, existing needs. And uh, in this case, Revolut has very ambitious goals in terms of where we want to go, where we want to get. Uh, we have a strategy. We want to keep growing our customers base, keep making more people happy with our services. But when we rely, when the business like Revolut relies so heavily on the paid channels, I would say that it's hard to keep scaling um, efficiently uh, because, well, if you if you constantly keep having keep getting the investment from the outside, which is probably not not a very easy thing to have in the coming years and this year as a yeah, there's like a global crisis happening right now. Um, uh, if you don't have if, if you don't want to grow your business on investment, you need to find way uh, you need to find more sustainable channels, and that's basically the main idea which we're trying to explain uh, here in Revolut within the company. We want to build the channel. We want to build a website and the channel together with the website, which would basically create additional source of uh, acquisition of exposure of our services to people in Google um, easier and cheaper than all the paid channels we have at the moment. That's very clear. Are there any challenges of you know trying to like prove the SEO value of a, an app first business? Oh, yeah. Pfft. That's, uh, I don't want also to speak about this too much, <clears throat> but it's not, it's not easy. And uh, that's actually uh, one of my favorite topic, if you allow, uh, in, in the entire modern SEO. Uh, and let me try to explain. When I just started doing SEO, uh, it was very easy. The whole web was very easy. It was 2014, as I, as I just mentioned. And uh, when you work in e-commerce, it's, uh, it's not a rocket science to connect some person who came from organic search. Even back in the days, we used to have referral from Google, so you can even know the query. Uh, it's easy to connect these pe people who came from organic search with the actual purchase. It's quite easy to calculate GTV, GMV, whatever is your metric associated to your traffic. And then you can just use this data to go to your management and say, hey, guys, that's, uh, that's the value we're generating with the current level of investment, with the current level of traffic visibility whatsoever. Uh, and that's where we can go. Right now, uh, I would say that my interest in, in attribution, in uh, understanding value of the SEO traffic uh, started to develop when I was working in Farfetch. Because in Farfetch, uh, when I was working in Farfetch, I had the experience of uh, doing SEO for a business, which is quite um, quite presented in both platforms. So uh, we used to sell a lot uh, to people on the website, but we also used to sell a lot on the mobile. And uh, a lot of, well, I can't remember the exact uh, percentage, but and I'm not sure if I can say uh, the exact percentage, but significant share of organic traffic used to go to the app directly. So say, uh, you already have an application of the company and you're searching for something in Google which the company potentially can provide, but you're not entirely aware that the company has it. You can find this result in Google and then just uh, through DeepLink, you would, be at, you would be redirected directly to the app. So you will not even visit mobile website. In this case, it's not uh, that simple, that straightforward how to attribute the value between platforms, between website and application. Uh, in Revolut, the situation is even harder because when I just joined, I thought that, okay, I'm advanced already. Uh, I'm quite experienced, quite advanced with my understanding of attribution. I will now um, cr like set up it properly here in the company. And by the way, when I joined, as I, as I mentioned to you uh, earlier, um, company never really thought about SEO. That's why there was no attribution model in place to even see SEO channel, even see organic channel in our uh, data. 
So that's something we have to start building because otherwise, if you, if you don't see your numbers, any numbers, which you can say, uh, that's the traffic, that's the value coming from my channel, you can't really speak because there is nothing to speak about. Um, that's, it, it's that simple. And what makes it difficult in Revolut, I just want to give these details uh, to, to uh, make sure that my experience might be helpful for someone in the same situation, but I'm not, I don't think that it's uh, applicable to everyone. In Revolut, uh, the journey we are trying to create for customer is, uh, is, is the journey which starts in Google, then customer gets to the website, and then customer, um, we need to drive customers to the application because the, the website experience is not as developed, is not uh, as brilliant uh, as uh, application. And this is natural. Uh, probably this will never change, mainly because we had so many people working on the application experience for such a long time. Uh, it would be strange to expect that we can build the same experience on the website. So we want to drive them into application to start using the services in the convenient, on the convenient platform. Uh, and in this case, you might have something uh, not very straightforward. For example, you are searching for uh, some financial things, financial services on your desktop. Uh, I might be biased here, but I would imagine that desktop feels more secure for some reason, at least that's how it works to me. And many people, I guess, would, would do the same. And uh, once you find a service which you are interested in, uh, we will try, if, if this is, if the service is Revolut, we will try to drive customers to install our app. But in this case, we will have to somehow connect this traffic on desktop to what is happening on, on the mobile. And this is not uh, straightforward. So I would say that uh, the best um, sort of setup, which I managed to, established in the company and uh, I, I'd like to make it uh, better, make it more efficient in the future, but that's what we have right now. We have three layers, uh, how we're trying to evaluate SEO and basically how we're trying to make some, how we're trying to, to measure some numbers, which later we will share with our uh, management. First layer is something, is everything in Search Console. So what you see in Search Console uh, is quite advanced in terms of, quite advanced in terms of, um, separating organic traffic, sorry, SEO traffic from uh, branded organic traffic. And that's two things which I prefer not to mix together uh, because I saw it in the past and um, it's, it's very easy to just uh, start claiming that uh, entire organic traffic coming from Google is, uh, um, is something delivered by me, but that's not true. And I think it's also, um, it's also not the, the, the best, best way to just build SEO in your company. So I, I tried to address it at Revolut. Since the beginning, I was explaining to everyone that uh, there is organic traffic and there is also SEO and branded traffic. In Search Console, luckily we can look into SEO traffic and that's, that would be my main metric. I want to see uh, what uh, SEO traffic, how much uh, of SEO traffic is coming to Revolut. Branded traffic is also interesting, but not at this point, not when we're just starting to develop the channel. The next level uh, would be something happening on the website. So uh, both uh, me and you, George, and I, I guess uh, our audience uh, is familiar that once uh, you clicked to some result, some result in Google and you get to the website, uh, GA or whatever else you are using will not be able to track uh, which query you use to get, get to the website. So we have to deal with the entire organic traffic here, but we still can try to measure this organic traffic. We, we can try to understand uh, how much value it generates for business. And then on, on this stage, um, uh, we will try to understand some conversions which are happening on the website. But in our case, Conversion is not as straightforward as you put things in the in your uh, basket and you do the, the, the checkout. In our case, we are trying to measure some certain actions, some clicks on the button, some uh, actions like submitting phone number. Clearly, when you submit phone number on the website, it doesn't mean that you will install the app. You can, there, there might be many things happening after it, but uh, what we are trying to do here is uh, 
We're just trying to come up with uh, some micro events uh, which would make it easier to, to build some uh, sort of funnel. So as you can see already from my story, it's not very accurate. And I'm always, uh, I'm always trying to be transparent that all these things are, uh, are just estimations, but that's how we are also trying to establish trust with our management. So the last thing I was just going to mention is probably the most advanced. So when you work with the, and I'm pretty sure it will be happening with uh, many businesses in the future. I'm talking now about cross-platform uh, tracking solutions. The most popular ones uh, would be Branch or uh, Apps Flyer. That's the names I never heard about three years ago, but I'm pretty sure now when you join to some company, you will hear about these guys at some point, especially if the company has application and who now doesn't have application. So um, what I discovered in my last three years of working quite closely with both these platforms is that they started as tools for measuring paid channel. They are quite advanced with measuring paid channel. You can pass a lot of uh, parameters. You can pass um, a lot of additional information you need for tracking. That's uh, totally fine. But when it comes to measuring organic, and we ask them to have uh, at least like source information, medium information, landing page information, some additional parameters, it's not that easy. You all, you, you just, it, it, they don't have it uh, from the box. It's something that normally you have to build um, working together with the managers from the platform, from the cross platform tracking side and some developers on your end. But eventually, if you if you will manage to get investment, get uh, technical support to make an um, advanced solution, then you will be able to actually start measuring uh, some actions happening in your some events in your website, such as signups, installs, maybe even GTV gross profit, whatever is your metric, to the original source of traffic. But uh, it's a very um, complicated thing to do. And normally it requires some person who has a very clear understanding how it all functions together. Uh, and that's quite rare, I would say. Normally people just know one side of things, how to track or um, how to do website or how channel functions. But when someone has a great understanding about all three moving parts, that's a quite rare thing. And I guess uh, that's a good skill for all SEOs, especially technical SEOs, uh, SEO people, which should be more developed in the coming years. Definitely. And I guess this leads me to my next question, which would be, are there any other things that you have learned from you know, your, your work at Revel so far? You, you already shared quite a few things that are very impressive. And I'm sure that many people will find valuable actually one of our i rem, you know i had a, a discussion with one of our clients yesterday about the fact that they want to you know start getting more um visits to their app store and yeah. so on and so forth so i will definitely let them know about this episode and they should definitely listen but um i i would like to to know if there are any other learnings that you have from the work that you have done at travel so far or, or any you know like peculiar things that you have discovered that you were not aware of uh before you you joined the company uh well it's a, it's an interesting question mm, i think i want to say that i learned a lot and at the same time i want to say that i didn't learn too much uh, mainly because I guess when you get to the level when you work in the in the business in in SEO for a lot of time, it's really hard to surprise you with something um, like all the basic tactics you are already familiar with, and all the new things which I see in this uh, in this sphere in, in when I work in Revolut is just how people use different tactics, but maybe uh, same tactics maybe in a different way. Uh, so. But at the same time, I, I learned many things which are probably company specific. So I'm not sure if they will be uh, necessary in this interested for a broader audience. I have some um, some funny things, uh, which I which which seem to, to be quite simple for me uh, as an SEO person. And I think it might also it might also be things which uh, SEO people normally don't think about, but we actually should consider that. Um, one of my uh, favorite examples, 
uh, I don't know why I want to just share it with the entire world, is that um, one of the product owners in the company reached out, out, out to us. So uh, just to provide some context, uh, at the moment, we are working with uh, several particular verticals of the business. We can't tackle everything as we have a relatively small team. And as I mentioned, Revolut have ton, has a tons of uh, services. So one of the services we haven't been working with since the beginning reached out to us because when it comes to results in Google, you always go to your SEO people, your SEO team, you start asking questions. Uh, and they just uh, asked me why the page which they created is not ranking uh, on top of Google results, even for branded query. And uh, well, that's that's what you expect because with branded query, I mean, it, it included Revolut plus product name. Um, and then I tried to analyze this situation. I looked into the the way how they designed the page and what pops up, uh, what, what pops, pops up at me uh, since the beginning is that the way how they phrase title and the uh, headline of the page has nothing to do with the way product is named. So it was like a very, how to say it? Uh, very, I want to say a very editorial uh, landing page, which would use some nice phrases, some uh, maybe inspiring uh, wording, which basically mentioned nothing about the product itself. So it was super clear to me uh, that if you're trying to, to make your page ranking for for a particular thing, you want to you want to make it clear for Google. You want to at least mention it in the title in the headline. Well, title is a yes, I think, but headline is super clear to me, and it was not clear uh, to them. So now I'm trying to uh, educate more people, more product owners about this simple thing. But I just find it very funny because such such thing seems to be really obvious to me as a person who worked for nine years, uh, well, eight years, sorry, eight years in the e-commerce. I never thought that that might be a case, um, but well, apparently this is the case. And uh, some other thing, which I uh, also remember, and this keeps, keeps happening to me still, uh, is related to Google Search Console. I, I know that uh, there are so many peculiar uh, cases uh, about Search Console in the internet, uh, and it makes it uh, even more uh, confusing that Google doesn't have a clear way to communicate about Search Console. I like how my managers or some other senior people might ask, get in touch with Google managers and check with them why these pages are in index. Okay, thanks for the advice. So um, it's interesting. Uh, and uh, I remember I tried to submit sitemap files and it just doesn't work. It, it just didn't work. So everything was correct. I could upload. I could. I could download the sitemap file. I did it like thousands of times in my past, and this time it just doesn't work. And I keep getting this very strange message: couldn't fetch. Google just returned it. Couldn't fetch. I started to Google for it, uh, and I found some uh, forums, I guess, some threads where uh, people also discuss similar issues, saying that this is just a bug on Google site. You can't do anything with it. Uh, and I, I just try to do whatever I can to resolve it. I, I try to uh, use the sort of um, solutions which people would describe in the threads and nothing actually worked. And when I got completely des desperate, I just got to one of the meetings with developers and start to complain that we created this page, uh, we created the sitemap, it doesn't work, Google can't fetch the file. And clearly something is wrong on our side. And they just kept saying that on our side, everything is fine. And when then one of the developers, he also did his own, I guess, browsing, did his own search in Google. And after like maybe half an hour or an hour, he slacked me saying that, oh, Arthur, it worked. It, it worked. Uh, and when I asked him how exactly he managed to, to do it, he just uh, submitted the same XML file with adding a get parameter to the file, some random, absolutely random get parameter. Uh, obviously, this idea was based on the fact that Google probably cache the request which we send into Search Console, but I never could even think about adding, I, I mean, I'm quite familiar with technical SEO, but I couldn't think about adding get parameter and uh, developer who doesn't have SEO background, 
he found the solution for such a complex problem. Well, such a complex problem for me at that point of time, which no one could actually reply in the internet, which I, I managed to browse. So yeah, it's, it's really interesting that you can have eight years of experience and still solution would come from a very unexpected place. Yeah, that's, that's a very interesting example, I must, I must say. Um, I would like to, to ask you, since you mentioned design uh, previously, and I would like to, to connect that with uh, something that I would like to, to discuss. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you approach um, kind of UX design in like fintech companies like Revolut? Is that something that you actually do as part of your SEO efforts? Because we see uh, at Minusia, we increasingly see, mm -hmm. you know, the importance of UX design when it comes to SEO. Okay. Because I, I can only assume that, you know, positive signals are sent to Google, that I have a great experience on this page and that helps. Okay. But I would like to hear your thoughts. Like, do you think that it helps? And if yes, how can you approach it on like, on a case like uh, Revolut's? Yeah, well, it's an interesting, also interesting question. All the questions today are interesting, to be honest. Uh, I think that my answer would be a, a combination of something that I am quite confident about, some some facts which I uh, read about uh, in some some researches, some Google articles, Google related articles, information retrieval articles, uh, and some uh, part of my answer would be more like my me hypothesizing about the things I'm not quite aware about, but I think it works this way. So just to uh, start with answering how I think in general UX improvements uh, impact SEO and how, uh, how, it can, how is this beneficial for SEO, I wasn't that sure that it actually is very important in my past because in my past I thought I, I, we used to, to see so many ugly websites and I, I was not really aware uh, what UX is because it's also, um, you also need to clearly separate UX from, from just design, right? UX is, uh, it, it might, might be horribly designed, but uh, still uh, it solves your problem, right? Um, and I, I think in the past, I used to see so many ugly websites in, in Google search results. So I used to think that, no, that's just some, some buzzword, which all these uh, guys keep talking about, but it doesn't really make any difference. And then uh, lately, I started to see, uh, there is a trend, I guess, uh, which is called product-led SEO. Uh, I'm currently reading a book about product-led SEO uh, and I see many people are getting really interested about it. So I must say that not all the ideas in this concept uh, I would agree with, but some of them actually make sense. And big part in this product-led SEO is UX. So you're, you're making better UX. Uh, and I also, uh, I was going through um, uh, some UX trainings just as a part of my additional development. I actually think that think that in the future, uh, UX understanding of good UX will be important for all SEO people at some point. Uh, and I was doing this course as trying to understand how to do UX for your product, like general product, not necessary SEO. And while doing this course, I just also subconsciously tried to uh, apply this knowledge to SEO. And the idea I uh, eventually developed is that. It's quite a special experience when you start in Google and you land on the page. Uh, well, I might be saying something uh, which is not a secret for anyone. It's, it's a super uh, basic idea, but sometimes I guess you just need to repeat basic ideas. Uh, and uh, when you land on the website, you expect a certain experience. Mm, what I mean by that, I mean that when you land on the website from organic, very likely menu is not as important for you as if you land on the home page on the welcome page probably some other elements would be more important uh, it's another question how you can marry together these two experiences for just product in general website in general and seo experience but what i realized is that uh, in all big companies which have which have big which has big websites which has big ambitions uh, it's important to actually 
when they're building pages, it's important to conduct this type of researches, especially, uh, well, with the commerce, it's easier because, with, because in e-commerce, all the pages pretty much look uh, the same. Uh, it's just a listing with products, with prices, or just a couple of images, price, description, sizes, etc. With services, it's slightly different. Uh, with news, um, well, I haven't worked uh, with the news uh, websites for a long time, but also might be an area for improvement with services for sure, because all the services websites uh, look so differently. They might have several elements, but at the same time, uh, it's not clear. Uh, is this important? Is this useful for customer what I'm providing? Uh, potentially with B2B. Um, case it might be also somehow similar but I'm just now trying to think about my personal experience uh, and my, my personal approach to UX in Revolut and another thing which also is a very old concept uh, and I think it's quite uh, I'm not sure if Google Google guys ever confirmed it but I'm pretty sure that's how it works because it makes so much sense to me and I heard about this from some study or even from some some scientific article, uh, and, and I'm pretty sure it works this way. Uh, normally, when you browse for something, you still want to check the options, so you would open several websites. You might not be happy with the first one. You you close the you close the tab, go back, uh, open the next one. The signal, which is called last click in session, to me it seems to be a very strong signal for UX or well, it, actually it's a signal for general satisfaction uh, from the website, but it might be a measure for uh, website UX quality overall, because you expect that if the website is ranking high, probably they already did the work with the content, with the backlinks, with everything. So uh, it's only like normally top three results would be very uh, good, very authoritative websites and UX is something that might be actually uh, a deal breaker. So this last click in session is a very, uh, very strong signal. And the reason why I, I, I'm so confident in this is because it's so easy for Google to measure this metric. When it comes to get some metrics from your GA, well, some, some might try to uh, speculate with the idea that Google use GA data to understand websites. Um, I don't want to um, spread too thin uh, or go long windy about this. I, I don't think it, it necessarily works this way, but uh, all the signals, such as clicks in search is something that is very easy for Google to collect and use to address your UX. And the other thing is more like uh, my idea, more like a debatable topic, but all these Google core updates, right? Uh, they keep talking about this and they never really explain what exactly they are being updated. Like this time we know that this is a link spam update. Okay. That's clear. Uh, previously, it used to be helpful content update. So sometimes it might be related to the actual update of a certain part of algorithm, which would be an automated part of, of, the, of the Google search. But my idea, and I think I read it on one of the Google discussion threads, which I, and, and I just realized I so much agree with this, is that we know that Google have quality search quality raters. Uh, we know that these people are continuously evaluating search results for so many uh, websites, combination URL and uh, query. And Google needs to incorporate this information somehow into search quality. My understanding of the score updates when it doesn't, uh, it, when it's not related to uh, some particular algorithms improvements, and I think it's like the most common cases, is just when Google incorporate results of uh, this uh, Google search quality raters uh, evaluations uh, into the algorithm. And uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to me because that would be the way a search engine, which is an algorithm, which is a software, can understand what people like and what people don't like. Because it's, a, it's not a trivial task, right? To, uh, I can think that one interface is, is more convenient you can think it's another interface that how ux works you always need to work with the big numbers so yeah uh if i would be looking into results of my ux improvements i would try to match them with the core updates luckily we have this information from google uh, but yeah i also wouldn't expect to see improvements from ux necessary in like months or just like randomly
Thank you very much. Now, many people listening to this episode may want to scope things for their website. And one of the things these people are interested in is the investment they need to make in SEO. Can you please talk about the investment in SEO and explain how this investment you know, changes based on the size of the website, the industry, the level of competition, and so on? Sure. Oh, well, this is a challenging question. <clears throat> uh, I, I must uh, worry, worry everyone that my experience might not be 100% relevant, uh, might, might not match uh, every particular business, but I can try at least to explain what we do here in Revolut and why we do it. So we started, even, even that we have a very big business with a lot of services, with uh, already a lot of SEO traffic coming to the website, we still decided to start it, the team small, just two people. And the amount of resource <clears throat> is, quite, uh, is quite little. Uh, I might say, a thing which sounds strange, but I even don't have my own budget at the moment. And I'm not even um, claiming for it. And I will explain why. In my past, I used to work in teams uh, where we had a lot of money. We have a lot of money to spend uh, and we have a lot of uh, resource internally in the team. We used to change the structure. We used to have uh, free. Uh, we used to have copywriters uh, sitting within the team. We used to work copywriters sitting outside of the team. We used to work with the backlinks building, uh, paying insane amount of monies for it, uh, for backlinks which no one even would be tracking and trying to understand the value. Um, we used to have. Uh, we used to work with the very expensive, very advanced uh, technical SEO tools, which is itself is a very um, is a really great solution, is a great, really great tool. But the sort of lesson I learned from it is that if you hiring a very expensive tool in SEO, you need to make sure that you also hire hired before a very expensive person who would be able to get the insights from this tool and turn them into life. Um, and when I saw all these things happening in the in my past, happened in my past, I realized that when I will be starting my team, I will go slow. Uh, I will only be asking for money which I necessarily need, which I can justify. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we'll just try to avoid uh, inflating this bubble as much as I can. I understand that sometimes... Uh, the rules of corporate game is to get more budget. That's how you becoming more uh, like respected in the company, I guess. Uh, that's how we used to, in digital marketing, that, that's how we used to evaluate uh, how big we are in the industry. But I just don't want to have budget for sake of having budget. I want to make sure that I can spend every single pound I got uh, turning it into value. Uh, but this situation is also balanced with uh, another kind of, um, well, part of the scale, which is expectations to grow to your channel. Because when you're trying to go really, uh, when you are being too ca cautious, like trying to only make right moves, you might not be progressing as fast as you would be progressing if you just hire um and copyright SEO copywriting agency and just burn a lot of money uh, into their um, chimney. Uh, so uh, if you start to see that's that's what's starting starting to happen uh, with my team recently. At, at the point of time when I start to see that expectations or pressure is growing from the management side, um, every time. Uh, when the expectations uh, to the channel and the current performance is not aligned, we will start this conversation. So I'm not a big fan of traditional business cases, but I guess there is no way to avoid it in all the companies. At least we're trying, in my team, we're trying to approach it in a smart way. If we can do something without uh, additional investment, we will try to do it with our own uh, resource or with asking for 
volunteers uh, volunteering support within the company it's actually a very common thing in Revolut to ask for a uh, volunteering uh, and i guess we're quite proud about it that everyone wants to help each other but uh yeah if you can clearly see that you reach to the ceiling you just will not be growing more if you don't do this particular investment if you will not start getting links to this page if you will not invest into creating content at this point uh, you should start having conversations with the management trying uh, to sell this idea trying to get this investment uh, but my main kind of uh, takeaway from this whole story is that I would not um, try to uh, inflate budget uh, and ask for more money as soon as you get the opportunity. Because here in Revolut, uh, I work on the position of uh, global SEO lead. So there is no, uh, no higher person above me in SEO. I, technically, I could ask for anything uh, for SEO. But I just don't, don't think it's the right way to approach it. It's been six months, seven months since we started. And now I see that clearly we now at, uh, are at the point when we need to start building more SEO content. And at this point, I probably also feel comfortable to prove the value of this content to, um, to the uh, management, to the senior management. In the past, if I would start investing in the SEO content just because everyone invests in the SEO content, when I don't have, when I didn't have website, I, we, we literally started with having no landing pages, that would be strange. Uh, it probably will be very uh, confusing for, in terms of uh, feedback loop with the management. They give you money, you create the content, and like what happens next. So I think everything should should be in place. Uh, my advice would be also is to not inflate your team too much. Uh, now, after six months, I'm at the point uh, when I'm asking for additional headcount. But I actually clearly understood why I need this headcount. And by understanding this, I mean that I, I came through some, some pain points, some, some actual SEO pain here, uh, understanding that if we don't have person doing that, our work will be jeopardized. That's what we already um, seen. And that it, at this point, you can start actually uh, justifying this additional hard cut count or freelancer or whatever resource, and that will be easier. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend to just do things because you read about them somewhere. Ideally, in every company investing in SEO and every fintech investing in SEO, if they didn't do SEO before, uh, I would recommend they just start small. Um, and uh, ideally, they invest in the first person they are hiring. I know that many companies like Revolut, Monzo, I think the same way, many fintech companies start SEO team with just one person who would be something like SEO manager, just like a kind of beginning of the entire team. I would recommend not to be greedy at this point and hire a good specialist which will be able to at least uh, create a good strategy, clear strategy, um, develop all the future processes. And this person will start, once this person build your skeleton, this person can start building, putting the meat on this skeleton. Uh, but yeah, don't really rush and do, especially don't really rush and do expensive things because everyone uh, does it. That makes sense. And that was all very insightful. Arthur, thank you, thank you very much. Um, last question I have for you. Where can people find out more and get in touch if they'd like to? Oh, well, if anyone is interesting, interested in, uh, in having any uh, additional conversation, I'm trying to be active in LinkedIn. So that's the main kind of social network where, where I'm trying to keep my conversations in the professional area. Um, I will not really... Uh, share my website right now because I'm still working on it, right? And at the moment, it's not in the best condition, but I will be developing the website. Um, but yeah, I guess, yeah, if it's about just getting in touch, LinkedIn, if you're not just uh, reaching me out trying to sell some service, then make sure I will re reply and I will be happy to have any uh, thoughtful, meaningful conversation. Always happy to talk about SEO. That's great. Arthur, thank you very much for being on the show and we would be glad to have you on again in the future. Uh, 
share more things, more insights and learnings from your work at Revolut. Thank you very much. Thank you, George, for having me today. And uh, yeah, we walked through a lot of challenges with recording this podcast, but um, I'm glad we've managed to, to complete it. Um, I'm so happy to really be here to share these thoughts. Uh, and I really hope that uh, some of the insights I tried to share today will be useful for some people. Clearly, de definitely we'll be happy to join some next time and share more, more insights once we've built entire, once we've built the proper SEO in Revolut, maybe in three years from now. Sure, maybe earlier. Who knows? Thank Who you knows? very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, George. Have a good Bye. evening. Bye. Before you go, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the sponsor for this episode, AHRS. AHRS provides you with an all in one SEO toolset that does everything from rank tracking to backlink analysis, keyword research, and technical audits. The best part. You can now use AEHRS Webmaster Tools for free to identify and prioritize optimization opportunities for your website, see all the keywords that your web pages are ranking for, take a close look at the websites that link back to and refer you in their content, and analyze other websites to find out what drives their rankings. Visit ahrs.com slash awt and sign up for free.